Hello all. Welcome to the second day of APEC virtual BFSI Innovation Conclave. And today we have various sessions on using transforming power of AI for the BFSI sector, also transforming security for the business agility in the BFSI sector. And now we have a session on intelligent automation empowers digital transformation of NBFCs. Uh, uh, a specific session on the challenges and opportunities of NBFCs in terms of uh, digital and technological innovation being leveraged. And we have with us uh, the digital transformation leaders from the leading NBFCs of the country along with industry leaders. Let me introduce to all of you. We have with us Mr. Manoj K. Sarangi, Senior Vice President, National Securities Depository Limited. We welcome Mr. Manoj. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Good morning. Thank you very much. We have with us Mr. Dominic Vijay Kumar, VP and Chief Technology Officer, Art Housing Finance India Limited. We welcome Dominic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. We have with us Mr. Dheeraj Mittal, Chief Operating Officer, Hiranandani Financial Services Private Limited. We welcome Mr. Dheeraj. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. We have with us Jaya Janardhan, COO, Indostar Capital Finance Limited. We welcome Jaya. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are also joined by Mr. Ankit Bhatt, Chief Strategy Officer of Magma India. We welcome Ankit. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Before we start our discussion of this session, let me just give you a small overview of this event. Yesterday, we had various sessions uh, on the various aspects of the BFSI sector. We had session on future of banking. We have session on cryptocurrency and uh, blockchain, the security aspect. We also had session on uh, uh, insurance, insurance uh, sector as well. And today, as I was that in the morning, we had two sessions on transforming security for the inside and transformative power of automation AI in BFSI. Now, here we have the session on intelligent automation empowers digital transformation in BFC. And in the hall two, we have another session going on parallel that is on the emergence and growing role of fintechs in the financial landscape. And I'm glad to inform all of you that yesterday also we had seen the presence of 250 plus delegates and today also the numbers will be same or more than that. And yesterday we saw presence of uh, more than 45 plus thought leaders as the role in the role of speakers from government, from bank, banks, from insurance companies, from the fintech companies and today also from the NBFCs and the uh, fintech companies as well. So over to you, Mr. Manoj Sarangi. My first question to you will be that how are NBFCs now being classified into a fourth tier pyramid and how are these tires using emerging technologies like AI, robotic process automation? Your thoughts on that, Mr. Manoj? Okay. Thank you very much. That's a, that's a great question. So the tiering uh, is based on uh, the scale of the organization. And uh, three basic parameters are being used uh, to determine uh, the tiering uh, structure. One is, uh, you know, the risk per perception of uh, the organization, then the size of operations, and uh, the nature of activity. So uh, risk perception actually depends on uh, the size leverage and interconnect with the various other market participants and, uh, and overall operational complexity of the organization. And uh, size of operation definitely, you know, one of the uh, biggest thing is uh, the balance sheet and uh, the financials. And then uh, the nature of activity, like, uh, you know, the, what is, uh, is the organization uh, accepting public deposit and what's the kind of risk uh, in uh, that or the kind of uh, activity that it does. And, uh, you know, these are some layer like, uh, you know, base layer, middle layer, upper and uh, top layer. So that's a kind of distinction that is being made. And the way that are, uh, uh, you know, these organizations have started leveraging AI is, uh, you know, primarily uh, for uh, three, three different aspects. One is, uh, you know, to improve efficiency, uh, speed, and then also accuracy of operations. So a lot of, you know, different areas these are being used, like EQIC, KYC, disbursement, repayment, uh, and uh, regulatory reporting as well. And uh, and uh, this uh, is uh, this is something that is uh, you know going to uh, grow and uh, uh, being uh, getting used uh, in many other areas. So uh, like uh, customer acquisition, customer uh, you know uh, interaction, 
then automated uh, uh, inquiries email queries then uh, targeting uh, you know outreach targeting so these are other ways that it's going to kind of uh, you know be used in future like uh, outreach targeting maybe having you know uh, data collection and analytics and uh, personalized marketing that also can happen so uh, this is this is uh, uh, is being done and uh, and uh, the uh, different uh, summary of various use cases uh, for for the same how about you right so if i take a crux of what you said that uh, ai can be used for three different aspects one is efficiency second is accuracy and also speed uh, that's how ai is helping mbfcs a uh, lesser perspective from dominic dominic uh, how is RPA and Chatbox uh, helping NBFCs offer personalized and instant customer support to their customers? Your thoughts on that? Yeah, thank you, Ashwin. So uh, there are two uh, two things, two technologies which gets involved here. One is your RPA robotic automation process. Another one is a chatbot. So both of them play from the customer centric point of view as well as uh, at the back office also. For example, if I say I we use RPA for our uh, at the quality level, CPC level. We have where we have a central processing unit that takes because RPA helps us out in when you have certain document like your PAN card, your uh, Aadhaar card, whatever is being uploaded by during the customer acquisition process. This is being read using an RPA process where the OCR is used to read the uh, uh, contents on that and autofill in the system so that the documents which is submitted is uh, up to the perfect level. There is no glitch because many of the activities when you're acquiring a customer, we do a manual entry. When, when the sales team is doing a manual entry on the, whether it's pan card and all to verify this and to see that the data what captured is perfect we use rpa process here we are more at a, a niche stage of using rpa only at the cpc level we are using but at the chatbot level uh, we are a little bit mature uh, most of our customer support uh, customer service is uh, uh, run by chatbot we use a whatsapp chatbot and we have other chatbots which is uh, developed and which is being used like today uh, any customer who calls up uh, my call center or uh, wants to have some kind of information on their loans or the existing loans what he's got with us or like uh, is any kind of request like change in his ROI or anything 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 related to his loan which is help the ch first level of uh, support is given by the chatbot because the, we have a predefined questions which has been given numeric values uh, marked against that so every time you press on particular numeric value you get the detail of that and we are further upgrading the system so that the customer himself can do a self-service for example if a customer wants a statement of account or he wants certain uh, is pre my schedule he rather than asking the customer service agent or calling up and asking he can do it on the through the chatbot where he can uh, um, key in his details and all this being secured using this registered mobile number so every registered mobile number uh, with us acts as a main authentication for him from there the data is pulled out going forward chatbot plays a very important it is not a replacement for the customer service team but it's more of a customer centric and easy and we are looking at um, uh, further enabling it to the vernacular languages because the kind of operations we do in tier 3 and tier 4 cities the kind of customers we have that will be more comfortable for them presently we have um, uh, in english and hindi which is supporting them so chatbot and rpa uh, will be the uh, next revolution from the customer centric point of view plus at the back office automation that's it, Coach. Right. So uh, you primarily talked about two uh, things, how RPA is helping in document uh, documentation, document process, and also yeah. how uh, Chatbox, which is the first level of uh, uh, support system offered to uh, uh, customers and how this is going yeah. to change in the future. I'll come back to Dominic. Let's have a perspective from the industry. Uh, we heard about uh, the leaders, digital transformation leaders from NBFCs talking about the uh, the advantage of using AI or robotics or chatbox. Ankit, uh, you represent a company called Map My, Map My India. Where do you see organizations like yours can uh, actually leverage this kind of new technologies to collaborate with NBFCs, to bring that transformation into NBFCs? Uh, thanks, uh, Sovik, and very excited to be a part of this panel. Um, uh, uh, so it, it's been an uh, exciting time, especially for uh, you know uh, companies that are providing digital transformation solutions. Uh, and and as I think as the uh, world 
at least in at least in india has become extremely more uh, digital there are these questions that are coming up that people want answered through external data and also to you know add to their own data so um and also to in, and also to better the operation uh, there are many many processes where technologies like ours are already uh, you know being uh, put inside so what we've we've actually seen across the entire uh, landscape of let's say an nbfc whether it is starting from verification of a customer and you know what address the customer gives is that address even true where does it exist um, and if a field person actually has gone and verified like physically gone there or not these are these are tools that we've already built where anyone can just send us an address that an applicant has given and then you know the location that a field person has visited and we know if it's if the same or not or if the address even exists or not um and that actually helps and also from like extremely newer technology uh, like newer uh, fintech companies like navi financial or something where they are trying to verify folks you know remotely uh, just through uh, you know what they report on their mobile phone and whether that location actually exists or whether that address in the is is correct or not so these are all digital ways uh, at least in the first process of verification uh, we've seen you know a lot of use cases um and especially when we also tie up with more financial data whether it is a, a negative area data or delinquency data that's coming in from a particular uh, uh, you know a particular nbfc that that itself gives you a very good good level of data science on where are the uh, areas where there is repeated uh, you know delinquent uh, delinquency uh, uh, you know patterns or if there are areas that are mid affluent low affluent and you can kind of tune what your uh, you know what what your uh, interest rate should be in in those cases for different requests um, from there from verification to even allocation so how do you allocate do you allocate based on location do you allocate based on distance who's the closest person what is the closest branch um and then finally on to you know uh, collections also when you're collecting uh that actually is a very large uh, case because uh, most nbfcs are very large teams field teams that are being operated to to you know to to go on on ground and managing those teams is not easy uh and that requires significant amount of automation to know that you know they've actually gone visited a customer or their distance that they're traveling is uh, you know is is automated and you're giving them reimbursement basis that uh, or also uh, you know after their uh, after after a you know a particular task is there what is the beat that a person sh- should follow so that you know they are they are uh, being efficient so all these different interesting uh, you know use cases are are something that you've come up you, you know you've heard from customers and we definitely been able to solve for it and also from a business intelligence and, and expansion perspective where where do you put up branches where are where are more customers in you know india is a large country seven lakh villages and seven and a half thousand towns it's a big question and daunting question that where should i move uh, and where is competition all of those questions come into where should i move and where should i expand uh, so that's in in a high level survey that we've been uh, working with to solve with uh, many many nbfcs all across uh, all across the country So as Ankit was saying that uh, a company like you is helping NBFCs in various facets. Uh, one of them can be, as you were saying, that verifying customers remotely uh, by leveraging the power of geolocation and all those things. And again, technology is playing a, a very important part in that. I'll come back to you, Ankit. Let's have a perspective from Mr. Dhiraj Mittal, Chief Operating Officer, Jalandhari Financial Services. Uh, Dhiraj, uh, uh, let me ask you a question. That is. Uh, How, with bad loans being a particular challenge for NBFCs, do you think right. that AI actually help in uh, financial analysis, uh, helping them to look at more prudent risk assessment? Yeah, uh, thank you, Shovik. Uh, just uh, wanted to highlight the uh, points which uh, just now Ankit has uh, put down that uh, the AI or technology or in, in any sense any RPA process or any tech support. which really helps nbfcs especially to uh, grow faster efficiently put an efficient uh, efficiency or a speed to the whole process that's a no brainer at this point in time everybody and anybody uses that from a, a np perspective or from a delinquency perspective uh, what we can use or what we're trying to use it uh, the trying to create an efficiency by the way of 
once the customer is defaulting let's say uh, can we predict that what is the probability of default starting from the first first emi itself to the customer becoming an npa after becoming an npa it's again a long drawn process of the legal followings and trying to recover whatever as much as you can uh, the good part is uh, we have started our nbfc almost two or two and a half uh, two and a half year back and we have uh, seen the cycle uh, thanks to covid lots of ups and downs in the entire this thing so it really helped us to identify that why don't we, we didn't had a legacy book so it was good for us and we did had opportunity to uh, improve on efficiency on collections by the way of predictive calling that which customer to call for which customer you go physically and which customer you just call and you know try to recover the money uh, from that uh, trying to create an uh, let's say a call center efficiency there in the regional languages people can manage those calls and then the even the field staff management and some point in time it also helps using uh, the google maps where the when the customer is given the original uh, addresses versus when i am going to collect the money whether the money is coming from that point or not or the customer is not deciding there because it's just a skip customer so it, it, at those point in time it actually helps using the technology or some component of technology which can in, improve your efficiency and speed of collection and what what we're trying to put it key uh, not saying that you can stop uh, making an account an np or a non np but it can give you time and speed to predict that more proactively more faster more accurately and uh, prior to an np you can resolve the account as and when you find it that will be what my take on from an uh, delinquency side or an np side on an overall basis i do see a lot of value in technology uh, coming to the uh, uh, starting from an acquisition side or from an operationalization uh, side or from a collection side so i, I would see from a three perspective uh, one perspective uh, ankit has just mentioned about that how efficiently i can connect let's say uh, we have around 60% field force are there fixed on the streets and to manage those field force this is important how much visits they are doing where they are going where they are meeting the customer where they are not not meeting the customer and that really helps you once you have a uh, tracking mechanism that what these guys are doing and similarly the collection guys if the collections are on force agency is going and visiting the customer or they are just updating a status and waiting for the customer to become a stressful so that get a better benefit you can start tracking through a tech uh, tech platform that whether how many visits were done actually somebody has visited or not and what was the response yeah over to right. you right right so uh, interesting that uh, how technology is helping in tracking and uh, uh, collection uh, ecosystem of the nbfcs uh, that's that's an inside i must say uh, uh, let me uh, have a perspective from jaya janardhan coo indostar capital finance limited jaya uh, how are the digital technologies helping in automatic kyc verification with the help of ai to make the client uh, onboarding operation smoother and faster you take on that jaya uh, uh thanks uh, savik uh, i think uh, it's a very interesting space in the uh, in the ndfc today uh, with respect to uh, the kyc i think uh, every organization today be it banking be it kyc is uh, doing a lot of work on this space because i think uh, kyc is becoming more and more stringent when it comes to uh, the customer his uh, visibility his uh, so when it comes to uh, the process, okay, today with the KYC coming in place, with the mobile apps coming in place, with them, so the channels of customer touch points is becoming very critical. So today, the way all organizations are getting geared up for, and obviously everybody knows the answer that uh, everybody is about today is called, you know, uh, we would like to be digital. Everybody talks about becoming digital. So the way uh, the organization that you bring up the customer can come through any channel, be it the call center, be it the branch, be it the dealer point, be it uh, to the website, the system actually, uh, the, the capabilities of uh, the uh, mobile app system are built with client technology which actually tracks the customer for his KYC information, Aadhaar is uh, updated automatically, NSDS, the PAN card, his verification um, documents. So everything is actually now done through an API process. Everything validated in there. What once upon a time you would look at is a two or a three day process of opening an account or 
exposing alone and giving alone now happens in a matter of minutes. The system also gears up in terms of the credit evaluation process for the, uh, the so called rule engine, which actually decides whether we have to give the customer a loan. And if at all, if you give the customer a loan, what will be the level of loan that we can give the customer? It's all inbuilt into the flow of the digital process. And therefore, in a minute, in, I mean, in a matter of you know, a few uh, minutes, the customer or the sourcing person will know whether you know what is the kind of loan that we need to like, give it the. Uh, to, uh, to the to the to the uh, What's the kind of capability today? Uh, the kind of uh, intelligence that has been built into all loans which come uh, in terms of sourcing. Not only that, if a customer is actually so the artificial intelligence today is so well built, if the customer already has a loan, is automatically updated. So the the, the the company knows that this particular person has actually sourced loan from X and Y company. Where has it different? Based on which decision can be taken. Today, the ability of an individual to be more and more, uh, you know, more and more cautious and more and more careful and more and more being very uh, proactive in terms of who they want to give the loan and who they don't want to give the loan is also something which is inbuilt into the technology process. So therefore, it's not like those old days and they were so slow and coming back to your front end customers. Where the customer is available. Even how valid and how true the offers are all about. Everything has the capability which is inbuilt into the KYC process. And most organizations today, with all the vendor support is coming, with all vendor technologies that come in, these are all inbuilt into the process. And therefore, today the uh, onboarding KYC is 95% of the organizations definitely know. The customers' locations, where they are, what is the accessibility, what is the civil score, everything. So they consciously people know what they're getting into their own lending. So that's the kind of process today called the piece of KYC, which is the onboarding process. So if you are blind to that, then obviously everything else gets into struggle. So I think uh, NBSCs today are more and more careful, and obviously the regulatory body is also made in mandatory in certain spaces. That they have to be followed. So, therefore, all of them are being careful when it comes to uh, the onboarding process and the lending process of uh, And even today, also, you won't find NPSCs giving cash. They mostly only credit to a customer's account, which means the customer definitely has an account with some other banks. So therefore, that end process of this person is also taken care of the entire process. So, this is a way that person exists in flesh and blood. Your lending to the person is also embedded into the process. Uh, so that's the way how today technology has completely, uh, you know, overcome the early challenges that organizations had uh, on board. Okay, sorry. Right, Jaya. I think Jaya, I'll request if you can just log out and log in again because I think there's some bandwidth issue at your end. But whatever little I have heard, I think you have. Can I just uh, my camera because I think that could help. You think that yeah, you can, you can. You can. Uh, add it's the okay. Time uh, I think it's better, uh, but I request you if you can just log out and log in again without the cam, that might help uh, us. Uh, so, uh, what I heard, I think that you are explaining how the uh, digital technology is helping in uh, KYC verification uh, by, by leveraging AI uh, and other technologies as well. Uh, now, if now if I come back to Manoj, Manoj, do you think that uh, when you talk about using technology and innovation, and we're talking about a lot of customers, a lot of data being generated. Uh, what is your opinion in how that intelligent automation or using emerging technologies such as AI and other things uh, helps in uh, data uh, data uh, handling? If I may ask you that. Okay, excellent question. So, see, uh, automation and AI has uh, multiple use, and if you if you look at uh, you know how this can be used you know one uh, one use is uh, you know uh, doing the kyc which is uh, more part of uh, you know uh, uh, recognition okay and, you know find out uh, whether it is matching a matching with b then there is something called extrapolation like uh, you learn certain uh, aspects and then certain aspects are extrapolated so these are these are very important aspects of ai which are currently being used Let's say I'll give an example. Let's say automated credit decisions. Okay, 
you know uh, if you uh, if you look at lot of lot of uh, problems that had happened recently is uh, during uh, due to the credit uh, which is uh, allocated uh, based on the perception so automated credit check reduces actually uh, you know uh, that uh, human factor and also uh, also uh, reduces uh, the uh, decision which is affected by perceptions okay so that is that these are two things which are uh, you know uh, which are a prime advantage then uh, there was a study that was done you know uh, some time back by accenture and uh, automated credit check actually reduces uh, onboarding cost by up to 75% so that's a cost reduction also there's a cost aspect that's a efficiency as- aspect and uh, there is also a risk aspect so these the three aspects can effectively covered by that then uh, the uh, fourth one is you know uh, uh, this automation can also uh, what uh, actually vijay uh, spoke about in terms of chatbots so i just wanted to augment that you know about uh, having vernacular languages uh, use of vernacular languages uh, so the bot or the ai engine make uh, uh, the uh, bot chat in the language of the user then the second thing is again uh, you know there is a human aspect which can be built in so the customers are more likely to come back and use the platform if it is personalized for their use so the remember the customer so that is uh, that's another aspect uh, of the chatbot and ai engine the third is uh, you know it is uh, personalized like uh, if a customer comes for certain group of customer or certain customer comes for certain services so so it can be personalized and uh, the user can be profiled uh using uh, various technologies so that is all, uh, also something that, that can be done and uh, one aspect i just uh, tossed up on a little bit you know uh, the risk management so right from fraud detection to to cyber uh, you know aspects uh, threat intelligence uh, and uh, deriving uh, deriving intelligence out of data and uh, preventing cyber threats so those are uh, also the aspects that can be covered using the technology and uh, the ai aspects so uh, overall uh, this is uh, this is what i think uh, can be done and uh, apart from that if you are looking at uh, uh, the collaboration between uh, you know uh, at the npfc that is something like you know the information sharing also can be done and uh, analytics uh, as a aggregate label can be shared across uh, uh, you know nvfcs to make prudent uh, decisions on various aspects uh, this may be um, non business uh, you know aspects risk aspects or other aspects which are common problems across nvfc where they are not competing so that's my take on right right so if i take a crux of what you said that uh... uh data handling and how ai is helping in that one is automated credit decisions which ultimately results in uh, cost reduction increasing efficiency and an effective uh, uh, ecosystem of risk management if i take a cut of what you said any thoughts on that that how ai and intelligent automation is helping in proper data handling hello Dominic, can you hear? Us? Yeah, yeah. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, I'm saying that how intelligent automation and the emergence of uh, AI and other things, how they're actually helping in data handling. We're talking about huge yeah. data. Yeah. Okay. Now coming back to this, uh, your query. Uh, first of all, we should be very clear that what kind of data we capture. The data has to be properly uh, classified. There are multiple data points. What we capture it has to be very clearly classified. and the huge amount of data what we hold there in ai plays a role and ml comes into picture okay if you have very le- less of data that thing a cannot work on it for example if i look at uh, in the collection process the kind of data we capture and keep the kind of credit processing which is being done using all this only your delicacy is built on the, using the data points what we capture the underwriting what is being done the, what kind of support uh, and what kind of uh, uh, tools we were use during that using that only we were able to uh, cut down on the npas or kind of delicacy report when you talk about uh, data in our kind of uh, business what we are doing like especially in the housing finance the kind of data we capture is vast right from his uh, talking about his uh, kyc up to his banking statement and all that but how are you going to store it and where are you going to use it and these data is what we capture and store is normally used in using for cross selling and up selling only 
and data should always be in you because when you start capturing the data how are you going to classify it and where are you going to store it data warehousing comes into picture and this will help us in building a better strong uh, customer base and as per and also useful for in cross selling and upselling of it and it also helps us in the uh, delicacy part for example if uh, i'll give you another example when we start uh, coming out new branches we use all kind of these data and find out is this branch useful setting up a branch in this particular location are we going to generate a kind of business how negative is this area what kind of uh, collection process have been followed this so these data what we capture has to be uh very well maintained and very well classified classification is very very important then post that using ai and ml tool will help us out in generating a business in a different way it will give a road map basically it's more of a using this data you can derive a road map and you can forecast certain amount of things which will come up that's my take on this right 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 i'll come back to dominic um, ankit uh where do you see the emergence of big data and these are we using ai and other uh, technologies helping uh, organizations uh, especially ngos uh, to leverage the power or harness the power of data and uh, how can it be a game changer in future um thanks for that question sorik so i think uh, big data means many things uh, big data means more context big data means uh, uh i think high level of attribution to every uh, you know every data point that is there about a customer uh, so the more you know the more uh, informed a decision you can take um and and about all the other aspects of of an organization right whether it is even the physical assets are there whether it's a branch or its employees and stuff like that so so i think from that perspective that's where more and more data is available through sensors through our phones uh i think dheeraj also uh, pointed up, pointed out about how you know live location tracking you know of field people will help that's nothing but another aspect of generating more data through the phone that field people carry uh they have phones they have those phones have incredible sensors they have this gps in it there is uh you know there is accelerometer there is compass direction there is camera uh there are you know you can also know what activity is going on the phone because you know you can so 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 that is generation of more data through through uh, through things that you control so whether it is uh, you know feed people that are going so that that generation of more data gives more context and therefore you can take more decisions in case of something like uh, you know where there is a feed person a generation of location can become extremely critical and using the camera also can be extremely critical when you're trying to take that uh, you know image and take the location and then do some machine learning on top of that to know that you know that activity has definitely happened on ground or the you know the person that he is visiting is actually a real person uh simple very simple things it's not very complicated and this is what's already there in most of our, and you can literally have models that tell you that you know the images of a real person the locations of the actual person that's being visited uh that's that's a context of big data or more data in case of uh, someone on the field uh in case of a customer of, or a prospective customer more and more data around the person can help right like do they what building do they live in what is around them uh are you if you have an app that the customer uses to make payments or to you know to communicate with you through some nbfcs have a, have a card also uh how are you how are they utilizing these services do you have do you have a you know network around around them which is which is servicing them to clean up uh that's also more and more data about the customer and also uh if basically more and more context around the customer and uh, and and that that's also very important and as you create more and more clusters around uh, such uh, such customers they, that will give more and more uh, attribution so around customers also there can be more and more data generated again through their phones uh also through external data sources whether it's through bureaus or its location data uh all of those aspects are are uh, more and more context on on the person uh, and and what the internal systems and operations right like more data around how can you predict uh, sales through you know different changing patterns in demographics and in uh, gdp or developments around certain regions right uh, for example if there is a, a 
you know if if the loan if the portfolio of the loan is specific specific to a particular type of customer or particular type of development then where do you how, how can you predict where such uh, you know demand is going to come up uh, and it's not only in uh, in the financial industry we've also seen that in other industries where people are asking us how can you predict like where is the gdp growing where are new buildings coming up because maybe their growth is attached to something of that sort or or it could be uh, vice versa like traditional banks are going out to you know cement dealers to get them to give them bank accounts so they are asking us where are these cement dealers across the country because it's all in cash so these are these are questions and this adds to that you know more and more data that previously wasn't available but now there are right they, uh, companies like us have uh, about 4 crore images of the streets of india you can run learning on it and you can pull out data points that can be useful to know how many shops are around where people live what does the area look like where they live uh what are the affluent areas in the entire country uh so that data uh, you know mixing into your operations can can give a uh, you know can can sig- significantly give you like very detailed insights so i think that big data context on you know whether it's peel customers or even internal business intelligence is something that um, i hope that helps uh, answer your question so right right In fact, like the crux of what you said that more and more data around the customer is actually helping understand understanding the customer in a better way, which actually results in uh, delivering to the customer or uh, or interacting with the customer in a more efficient way. Uh, thank you, Ankit. I'll come to Jaya and I'll also come to Dhiraj. But before that, I think Ankit has to leave. Uh, so before that, uh, we will continue with the discussion. Uh, we have a small. a uh, token of recognition for our speakers who are part of this panel we want to present them with the mbfs leadership award uh, so can we have the certificates on screen please the first award goes to mr manoj kesarangi for his pioneering role in innovation and technology leadership in the bfs sector for the mbfs sector we congratulate mr manoj sarangi thank you so much for joining us today this is a small token of appreciation from our end thank you thank you very much The next award goes to Mr. Dominic Vijay Kumar again for his pioneering role in innovation and technology leadership in the BFSI sector. The APEC BFSI Innovation Leadership Award for 2022 goes to uh, Dominic Vijay Kumar. Congratulations, sir! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The next award goes to Mr. Dheeraj Mittal, Chief Operating Officer of Indianandani Financial Services Limited, for his pioneering role in innovation and technology leadership in BFSI. So I'm honored to recognize your efforts. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Shobhik. The next award goes to Jaya Janardhan, COO, Indostar Capital Finance Limited, for her pioneering role in innovation and technology leadership in the BFSI sector. It's an honor to present you with this award, ma'am. Apex BFSI Innovation Leadership. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Apex uh, BFSI Innovation Award team and uh, Shobhik. Thank you so much. Like is all ours, and the next award goes to Mr. Ankit Bhatt, Chief Strategy Officer, Map My India, for his pioneering role in innovation and technology leadership. Again, it's our honor to recognize your efforts in the technology sector. Uh, congratulations, Ankit, for winning the APEC Bfs Innovation Leadership Award 2022. Thank you, Zavik. Thanks, thanks a lot, and thanks to the APEC team. Right, right. Thank you so much. With this, we continue with the discussion. Uh, uh, Let's have a perspective from Jaya. Jaya, your uh, take on the uh, uh, using intelligent automation for proper data handling. The, uh, the way we look, the way we uh, uh, look at data is. I hope I'm clear now, Savik. Yes, yes, both uh, visually and uh, audio-wise as well. thank you uh, so uh, the uh, in terms of see uh, we always uh, i'm sure people who work in uh, uh, the banking sector and the nbfc sector always uh, recognize one fact that data is god so data can be uh, the uh, part which chocks your actions of what you need to do next so um, whether it is uh, sourcing customers whether it is analytics whether it is managing of npas whether it is uh you know uh, whether you want to take a decision on what you want to do is all done through the analytics of the uh, information that we have and today 
data is available in all sources and forms and data is good data when we talk about big data we also talk about good data data is really really good there are a lot of organizations a lot of com uh, fintech companies who come out with information which is available of people's behavior and uh, you know how people behave what is the behavioral aspects of people within a 100 square meter uh, space that's the kind of information which, which is available with people with that information being available the behavioral aspects of a customer of what he needs why he needs where is he how what is his how the, how do you track him is available for the for the user so the lender actually is now more with information which he needs to effectively use it channelizing data putting a proper uh, analytics in place understanding uh, how to how to uh, manage the data is very critical what happens in most of the cases is everybody has data. What to do with the data is a big question mark. How do you use this data is very important, right? Uh, if there's too much of information, people don't know what to do with it. If there is less information, people don't know how to get more information. So channelizing information through a proper analytics process on managing how to use this information effectively is very critical. Uh, that is, in fact, that helps you to actually analyze the user's behavior. Like earlier, how you used to do is when you go for, to a uh, client, you used to, okay, we used to more or less say, okay, fine, he's paid 80% of his loan. He has done a good payment. So let's give him a new, uh, let's give him a new uh, loan or an additional top up loan. Today, the analytics actually can tell you well in advance. you want to have him as, as a customer or you don't want to have him as a customer? Do you want to lend to him? Do you don't want to lend to him? Do you want to actually give him uh, beyond a single loan or do you want to give him multiple loans? Everything is based on the uh, data that is available and they really don't need to so seek out information is available uh, with the with the organizations, with this behavior, with the customer's behavior, with the data which is available across the, uh, uh, across the industry. So that's the kind of um, uh, mind that all of us are sitting on. Now, be it uh, the, uh, the risk team of the organizations, be it the business team of the organizations, be it any other team of the organizations, uh, the way you channel, that's something which I think in most organizations, while we talk about analytics, really how analytics has to be used is still, they, is still not there. I mean, according to me, it's still something which, is, which has a yet a long way to go. I think that is where we need to now start investing because... We talk about, uh, you know, the use of robotic process automation. We talk about uh, ML, we talk about AI, but actually using data and managing it is a space that still needs to be evolved and developed as we go by. And I think that's going to be the next happening space in the coming few months or coming few years, because digital was one, automation digital was one leg we, that that space has been arrived at, but now is how Data will play around as a big, big, big uh, space we have to watch out for. Right, right. Jao, uh, as Jao was saying that there is no dearth of data and good data, big data. But uh, how to use that available data? And I think there is a need of the proper use of analytics and we need to focus on that, that how do we analyze uh, that data in a proper way to get the desired outcome. That was the crux of what Jao was saying, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I see. I saw Viraj nodding his head when Jaya was uh, speaking. Viraj, your take on that? Yeah, I think uh, Jaya has put very interesting point, and that's what the important in the current industry uh, and the trend which uh, we are looking at. The data is everywhere and anywhere. Like, say, you start acquisition process. There's a hell lot of data coming out to the table for an underwriter to see want to use it and uh, what I say rather there is an explosion of data especially in the acquisition side a lot of work has been done everybody is trying to acquire a customer by more and more means more and more channels more and more data points internally and externally they use behavioral data they use uh, his uh, past credit behaviors uh, his social media data is, is currently how, how we perform in society what he's doing uh, all those things are used in a lot of uh, people have created scores. So that's a, the, the scoring models based on that and using it. The whole point is, uh, which I, I would agree definitely with Jaya on that, how to use the data is a critical point and uh, uh, critical things to th uh, thought about. That how do we use that information which is available? I don't want to show my credit manager a hell lot of data just for doing uh, analysis of a case or rather than he'll increasing like everybody would as an underwriter i would i would love to have more and more data point but i'll take more and more time to analyze the data point and come out of with a conclusion uh, just to, to take an example of a fourth bureau report 
now everybody wants all the bureau are at your disposable you can generate uh, all the four bureau and then looking at the four bureau the underwriter itself get confused that which one to follow which one not to follow can we create a one view uh, or let's a lot of companies are doing a lot of people are trying to give a one view of those sort of information where a credit manager can help with that information taking a better decision he has his let's say uh, app uh, location data which uh, let's say cpv report along with his location data or what do you say a google mapping or a map my india mapping all this information he has but to take a decision how i'm evolving that guy who's taking a decision typically a credit manager underwriter uh, regional managers to use that information is most critical aspect now uh, we have a dearth of data available how do you use that information is going to play a key vital role in next coming uh, years for the industry on the other side i say there's a lot of work already has been done on acquisition side to use this data but there is a very less works been done on terms of in customer service which dominic has put a point earlier on a customer service side on a collection side it that whole space is i would say it will evolve or explode in next couple of years because uh, in lending what we do typically is we do lot of effort on acquiring a customer then we we'll leave it because the loan is 3 years 5 year 10 year we only go back to the customer either he bounce the emi to collect the emi or we try to uh, cross it and upsell so the idea is can we bring a platform can we bring try and create a relationship model where i can use that relationship model let's say customer refer uh, another customer if he's happy with our services or uh, do something else or give us a reference and uh, uh, win something try to use that information in more positive manner currently most of the nbfc use only the information either for a cross selling let's say people are fed up i've seen uh, a lot of social media tweeters etc that we get 20 calls a day 30 calls a day from uh, for a cross sell or an upsell because i have taken a credit card or i have taken a loan from somebody else and that's becoming a problem how i connect more creatively with the customer and try to pitch my product rather than just picking up a call and every one of us uh, sitting in this panel must be receiving at least 10 20 calls a day can i use it more creative way of that uh, making my pitch to customer more more efficiently and more silently rather than making just a uh, a voice call or something else so that's where i see a lot of work has to be done how you cross sell or upsell uh, a customer by various new creative modes using this data point you have acquired at the time of acquisition or you are constantly having those customer uh, data points using let's say a whatsapp chat or uh, a, let's say a more other meaning of communication or a chat board or from a collection point where the customer comes for a foreclosure and that, that let's say there's a clear sign of that customer or a customer asks for a list of document of his loan or something like that that is a indication for you that customer might be uh, attracted to uh, some third party probably you can retain that customer at that point in time or at that point solve his problem and then uh, make an upsell pitch or try to sell a, a cross sell or other product so that is where i think a lot of work has to be done and a lot of work can be done because those informations are available in this uh, system but yeah i would say that 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 area has to be uh, worked upon in next couple of years and i am hopeful that um, many more nbfcs and everybody is working on it and they'll come with the uh, better options to Uh, make a better connect with the customer rather than just making a voice call for a uh, upselling a loan or a, a collection call that's it that's from my side show connecting creatively uh, yeah. with the customers uh, efficiently with customers and these are things that still lot of things can be done in uh, that domain itself uh, with this i think you have come to the end of this panel discussion and in an uh, insightful panel discussion a uh, lot of insights have been gained a lot of uh, view points have been shared by all of you the panel name was internet automation empowers digital transformation of nbfcs but we are we are but we have also tried to go beyond what has written in the headline of this panel discussion to actually uh, create that discussion where we can actually make that comprehensive nbfc ecosystem where technology and digital disruptions are going to play a major role in coming years i once again thank mr manoj sanghi dhiraj mittal jaya janardhan dominic vijay kumar and ankit bhat for joining us today for this panel discussion in the end i think i can uh, end with this thing by saying that uh, it was said by lon saunders calvert uh, once he said that no matter how disruptive the technology its application and effectiveness will ultimately
depend on the strategy of each firm. There is no single formula in which digitization can be deployed. And I think for last one hour, we was discussing that uh, how data can be used more effectively, how technology can be used more effectively. And as Jirat was saying that, uh, again, that's a great insight that connect with customers in a more creative way. I think for each and every NBFC, there should not be any set pattern that everybody has to follow this only. Rather, we can all think of following path according to our own need. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us today. Do join us for the next session at 1 p.m. IST today, uh, one session on changing regulations and how NBFC is looking at the compliances. And parallel session at 1 p.m. again, digital payments challenges and opportunities. With this, we come to the end of this panel discussion. Do join the highest time. But before we end, let me thank our speakers and our partners, digital transformation partner Avaya, security partner of Fortinet, gold partner, language translation partner, Dave Negri, associate partner of Map My India and Choice Solutions Limited, and active influence partner Click. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Take care. Do join us. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.